Hello, welcome back to Final Fantasy VIII Remastered Commentary Playthrough. So we made it to Estlar. We finished the Laguna Dream sequences and we grabbed every item that we can up to this point. So, last episode I said play Odine, get the ward card. I did that. And there it is. So, luckily I was able to get the, uh, the plus rule to spread here which took away the random roll. Uh, I can't see their card still because I don't have open anymore. And I had the trade have trade rule set to all. So I at least got some good rules going on here. Uh, I just have to deal with plus, which isn't too bad, I guess. So at least I can select my cards, which is the biggest thing that you kind of want the ability to do. Uh, if you end up refining the war card, he will turn into three Gaia's rings, which will teach in uh, GF the HP plus 80% ability. So it's a very, very useful card. Um, I would probably save it to late game until you actually know how you want to spread around your GFs. Because right now mine are just an organized mess from that last Lagoon Dream sequence. Um, but you don't have to worry about any battles inside the town. So we are going to reconfigure this by the next episode. But today's episode focus is going to be on the entire city of Estar and picking up a lot of like hidden items and whatnot. Uh, show some cool things in here that can be done. And then once we finish that, then we will actually exit the city and head on to the next major story point, which they want us to um, meet them at the Lunar Gate. Which will be... Uh, another building on the outside world here in Estar region. But anyway, make sure you play Odine, and if you can, get some good rules to spread around here so that you don't have to deal with random. But if you're stuck with random, I mean, I'm sorry, good luck. Card refine, uh, you can get rid of, you know, certain cards that you might not want anymore so they don't keep showing up in your hand. But some of that's really hard to say because a lot of these cards like this are going to require, you know, multiple versions of them. Or you'll run into this problem where you already have a hundred of, of these things and stuff like that. So, not a good time. Not a good time. You can sell that stuff, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have that ability soon. Okay, so... Estar City is a very um, big place, chaotic. You can get lost here very easily. I do suggest at least getting familiarized with the place without the use of elevators because there's going to be a section in the game where uh, your memory is going to be tested on locations that you visited. So from here, kind of run around the city if you want, you know, get used to, uh, get your bearings right, see where every avenue will take you. But the first thing I want to do is to come over here towards the left, alright? So to give a better diagram of what we're doing here. From the presidential palace is what this is listed as, you want to take this left, take another left up this ramp. It's right down, and then you're going to see this uh, dude in the purple cap. You want to talk to him. When he gives you the dialogue that he's on a break, you want to go back to the presidential palace. Now, you can take the, the lift here if you want. I can go by a little quicker. And then literally return to the entrance of where Odine and the, uh, the aid were sitting at. A lot of back and forth here, so just get ready. And 
and what this is going to give us is the missable uh, occult fan number four, which is the final one. And you're going to talk to this lady right here. Once she leaves, go ahead and interact with the pile of books, and you will have collected the final occult fan there. And this will tie in every of those alcohol fans that we've been collecting up to this point in the game. Now we can kind of get a, a feel for what, what is going on here. Um, still, the obscurity of the wording here does not tell you specifically what you need to get in order to summon this thing. So that... People that were stuck with all owned status, full recovery medicine. So, you know, without even knowing what that is, I mean, how are you supposed to put, you know, two and two together here and understand what they're trying to talk about, right? But basically, these magazines are a precursor to summoning a GF known as Doom Train. And we are in the area now where we can actually get the ring that is required to summon this GF. However, the items that we need are, we do not have at the moment. I only have gathered uh, six steel pipes, which I kept hammering on in the very, very early episodes and said, hey, you need at least six. Do not get rid of six. So I was even like adamant about not upgrading Irvine's weapons because they required steel pipes. Now, they're not a very hard item to get because you can refine them from an Elastoid card, or you can steal them off of uh, the Wendigos that are in the Galbadia region, and a little bit near uh, Timber as well. So they're not difficult, but the, but the most difficult thing is to get the uh, Malboro Tentacles. You'll need six of those. I only have one, I used to have two, but I have to teach uh, Quest's Bad Breath, you know, so that you can get your full uh, blue magic list, and you're going to need a uh, six Remedy Pluses, and how Remedy Plus is equal to full status recovery medicine, I don't know how they expected us to know this back then without the use of a guide, but that's exactly what you need, and you need six of those items. So in order to get the Remedy Pluses, you're going to need Alexander, and he's going to have to learn Med Data, and then Medicine Level Up or something like that. It's another ability that he learns right after Med Data. And you can see that it costs a lot of AP anyway to even get through this one. So the next one is going to take a while, too. There is, there is going to be a very simple method, though, once, once we get what we need in order to start leveling these things up properly, but that's just a precursor into what we need to do uh, to get the GF Doom Train. But find the aid, come back to here, get that magazine because it is missable. This is your only opportunity to get this magazine. You can't buy it and you can't make it anywhere else. Now, there's, there's a lot of obscurity uh, in this place. It's very hard to kind of make a guide here. Steve and I, even playing this game for so many years, I still get lost in this area. Okay, so the shops. These are essential. One specific shop that you really do want to uh, kind of spam dialogue at is a, a shop called Cheryl's Shop here, right? So you can you can go to any one of these little like vending areas, and it'll ask you, "Do you want to go shopping?" I usually start the right side, and then I work my way over to the left. But if you continuously now these are horribly written, you can barely see them, so you'll have to read the bottom. Dialogue there. Uh, uh, this is Rinrin shop, so it's a pet store. And 
you can see that they sell uh, valuable scrolls, right? So if you're if you're trying to get a GF for someone, but they don't have like junctioning and stuff like that, this is where you buy the stuff from. So this store carries uh, pets values five and six, and a lot of the stuff that you're seeing right here, you probably aren't gonna see it if you don't have Hanberry and learn his familiar ability. With me having the familiar ability, I now have access to the rare items inside of shops. And this, these are the rare items, and you can tell by the price too. So we've been kind of stealing these and, you know, getting these as like card mods and all sorts of stuff, right? The Force Armlet is something that Sorceress Adia would have dropped regularly at the end of Disc 2. Uh, but we stole a, um, a Royal Crown instead. And this is why I said to do it, because you can just buy this stuff. And with being able to buy this stuff, you actually get access to, you know, some some of the late weapons um, requirements. Um, I would probably start stocking up on some Amnesia Greens here, because we are going to need these. I would say probably no more than maybe 10 right now as a start. And then definitely buy Pets Volume to one, uh, 5 and 6. This is the only place you can get them. And this will complete Renoa's uh, magazines for Angelo. And then what you want to do with these shops is you just want to continuously click, you know, on each individual shop. So this is a Cloud Shop and sells ammo. Buy it if you need it. If you want the stuff up here, go ahead, you know. Just at least visit the shop one time. And then, so the secret with some of these though is, if you continuously click on these shops, even though if they say they're closed, you have a chance of getting a present, which I just did right there. And I actually received a high potion. So, you can get some hidden stuff for doing this, and then, like you just saw right there, they open the shop. So all of these shops can be opened, you just have to continuously spam X on them in order to get it. And you can see the shop sells elixirs, which is, uh, if you don't have familiar, you won't see it. Uh, Mega potions, Mega phoenixes, it's all here. So stock up on whatever you need. Not a big deal right now, though. This is the junk store. So now you can start planning out your needs for your uh, ammos or for your uh, weapons. And I'll give locations of where you can find this stuff. So we actually have access to Selfie's strongest weapon in the game right now. Um, with the Strange Vision. Strange Vision is one of three weapons in the game that actually go up to 255% hit rate. Uh, meaning that the Selfie will never miss ever again. Uh, Questus has the other weapon called Save the Queen. And Squall has already uh, 255 to begin with. I say the Queen is actually on 107. Hmm. For some reason I remember that differently. Alright, so I guess there's just two weapons. So any of Squall's and then the Strength Vision, 255. Everyone else you're going to have to uh, junction their hit stat in order for them to hit 255. This is Karen's store. So, like I said before, you you know you can pick up these magazines as you come across them uh, very easily in the game. Some are won by battles and stuff like that, and some are just obscure and you have to go out of your way to get them. But they're not missable. You can buy them at any point. But just grab them when they're free, you know. If you're not interested in any more of the side questing or you messed up Laguna's. Uh, I believe it's his second dream sequence when we actually are like in the S-Star mining area 
uh, go ahead and purchase the Combat King 5 at the very least because you will not have access to that in this upcoming area that we're going to visit. Um, and with the Combat King 4, we're actually about to talk to the NPC that's going to give us this item. So, 4 and 5 are actually free if you do certain things correctly, which if you've been following this entire playlist, you're going to get them. And then, as I said, with the occult fans, so 3 and 4 are missable. Uh, 1 and 2 you can buy. 1 you find in Balam Garden, like, at the very beginning of the game, once you visit the library and just spam the bookshelf. And then, you know, 2 is uh, pretty easy to find as well. So that's the bookstore. And then Cheryl Shop. So this is the one we really want to spam right here. Awesome. So continuously spam Cheryl's Shop for the Rosetta Stone. That is the first Rosetta Stone that we've come across in this playthrough. You can get, like, an infinite number of these things. There's really no point to you only need three anyway. Um, and this will teach the GF uh, the ability times four um, ability, I guess, if, if you want to call it that. So now you can put it on a GF and give a character, you know, four of those ability slots. So they can have HP plus 80, strength plus 60, magic plus 60. You, you could just go crazy with it, you know, and at the end game, you're going to want these things. Uh, but this is the very first one we found. One GF specifically comes with the ability times four, and then another Rosetta Stone will be found in the end game area of uh, Final Fantasy VIII. So, spam Cheryl shop there, get the Rosetta Stone, and that's super important to do. And then for her shop, I actually don't think her shop uh, opens up. And if for whatever reason you're sitting here and you're spamming like crazy and it's not working, just try a different shop like down here. And they'll do the same thing. Yeah, I just don't think her shop ever opens. I could be misleading on that, but as far as my memory's going, I don't think she's good for anything but the single Rosetta Stone. So if I find out otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll add commentary for that, but I'm 90% positive that Cheryl's shop is just good for the Rosetta Stone only. But at the very least, make sure you open up those other shops. And one final piece of thing that we actually want to do here, so there's a hidden drop once here somewhere. Uh, no, there's not. I lied. I'm thinking about the Kiraga drop point that's um, actually visible. So there should be a soldier above us. Yep, there he is. So he's above us. Um, we're gonna have to go up there in order to talk to this guy. And how we get there, I will figure it out.
Here we go, there's a Kiraga draw point. Yeah, so you get used to this area, like right now. Um, I would actually plan a route. So you want to talk to this dude right here. He's going to say, oh yeah, that's right. And once you get this dialogue, you've already completed um, the ability to get Combat King number four for Zell. So what's going to happen is that the soldier is going to be running around um, in this area and he's going to come by pretty quickly on the screen. So you want to catch him while dealing with the countdown timer too because there's this whole sequence that's about to happen. Uh, so once you catch the soldier, he'll actually give you the Combat King 4, but it's not accessible unless you talk to this guy right here, where he says, oh yeah, that's right. And whatever reason, that, that just unlocks it. So... Just keep that in mind. So let's get us to a point where the game is going to tell us to go do this stuff. Alright, so this will be a Quake draw point. This is uh, Odin's laboratory. So this is where you're actually going to begin this little hectic um, find this place on the map and wait for this thing to show up type event. And basically from Odin's laboratory, If you head to the left, you'll get the save draw point. And you actually want to do this. So just keep in mind that this exists here, so that green light will heal you as well. It's a full cure. And you want to head straight. Make sure you take this right. So from these steps, straight, turn right. Take this right. I'm down. I'm down again. Take this top. Follow these stairs upwards. And this will be the first location that you need to uh, put your people at. So Zell's going to be in charge, and this is where you kind of want to stop. Um, but there's going to be a soldier that runs by you, so you, you want to come to this screen first, uh, grab a guy that looks just like him, and make sure that you talk to him so that he'll give you the Combat King 4, and then run back over towards this screen and you will have the first part of that mission already completed here. I'm sure there's easier ways to get to this point, but that's just a method that's always worked for me because it can be very confusing. It'll make more sense since we actually start seeing what's going on here. Actually, yeah, that, that looks like a better wrap, actually. Let's do this all over again. So take this left. Past the draw point. Go up around the air station. Take a right. And take another right. Yep, yeah, okay, so this seems like a better way to do this. This might actually be the way I always do it. I just can't remember. Okay, more beautiful. Perfect. So cancel all of that and do exactly what I just did right there, and you will find yourself in a much better position to take on what's about to happen here. Alright, so those those were the three major things that, well, I guess four major things that you need to take away from this place. Make sure you secure the ward card from Dr. Odine. Go to Cheryl's shop. 
and spam it until that Rosetta Stone shows up. So you can have this lovely ability times four ability. You know, so they even call it that too. This is awkward, right? Pick up some of these magazines. Wishing Star is uh, Renault's like ultimate move with Angelo. Kind of works like Squall's Lionheart in the end. Just looks incredible and crazy. Make sure you pick up Occult Fan 4 from talking to the presidential aide and running back to the presidential palace. And then talk to that soldier on the bridge, get his dialogue, so that in the upcoming events of the game, you're, you can net yourself a free Combat King 4. And even if you miss the Combat King 4, you'll be okay. Because you have an option to always buy it, and it's only 10,000 kills, so not a big deal there. Um, but for now, with the city explored, and hopefully you got your bearings a little bit here, um, hopefully I made sense of this part, because this is where you're going to start with uh, Zell and a, and a group of people, and you're going to have to run to certain locations within the city in order to intercept this, um, this thing that's going to be spawning soon. Then you take the right, and then just continue right, and there will be a bunch of pictures and reminders and showing you if you're in the right spots or not. But that is the easiest way to deal with that. So we'll cover that when it actually happens, though. I don't want to be... I've already been too confusing about it right now. It's not making sense because nothing's happening. This, the city's at peace for now. And those pictures are very misleading because, you know, 1999, they didn't really make a very good effort on it. So go ahead and head towards the uh, city entrance here. Head down. Squall's gotta take a little good peek at the city that he was just at and be in disbelief. Um, up to you if you want to rent a car. Honestly, if you have Encounter None on anyone, you don't really need to worry about this. Because there's gonna be a lot of party shifting here in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming area. And it's completely up to you if you want to uh, rent a car and drive around this place. It can be beneficial, but I don't think it's really worth it. Because with Encounter None, you know, and times three speed option, I think it's a lot better than wasting money on a car and wasting fuel that you don't need to be wasting anything on. So the monsters uh, will actually spawn along this, like, the roads on this thing. Uh, some of them can be pretty tough. You'll uh, come into contact with the turtopods, Koromas, which are corals from, you know, the history of the Final Fantasy games, and possibly Elanoils at some point, which we haven't even seen except for the Elverit, like, at the very beginning of the game. And then if you look at your map, a whole bunch of new areas just opened up. So we got Astar and its air station, the Lunatic Pandora Laboratory, the Sorceress Memorial, which we're actually about to go visit, uh, Tears Point, and the Lunar Gate. So they want us to head over to the Lunar Gate, but just to get familiar with the land of Estar here. And you have a chance of encountering Marlboros out here too, so that'll be your first encounter with them. A very dangerous enemy, especially if you're not status defensed against them. So the Lunatic Pandora Laboratory, obviously you remember it from the, the Laguna little dream sequence there. Save as needed. Play with the Moomoo or the dog. The magazine will not be here if you didn't grab it in Laguna's dream sequence. Can't head downwards. Okay, so then we want to check out the uh, Sorcerer's Memorial here.
All right, so nothing really important about this place for now. Uh, we will have to come back here eventually. This will be a, I believe, an arrow draw point. Let's take a look at it. Stop. Oh, okay, stop. But yeah, they'll stop you. You can't do anything there. And then, uh, most important place that we really do want to see here is Tears Point. So that's the Lunar Gate. That's where they want us to go. And Tears Point, I actually recommend coming here, like, right now. Because if you come here at a much later area, or in a much later time, then things are going to get kind of chaotic and you're going to run into a lot of high, high level enemies in here. But right now it's kind of peaceful. You can hear the creepy atmosphere music. And you'll see this little uh, like item kind of sticking out the ground, just interact with that. And that's the Solomon Ring. So this is the ring that was alluded to in Occult number three. And if you try to use it, it'll say can't summon GF. Stumped me as a kid. I was always missing a few GFs and I was like, how do I get this ring to activate? Well, find out years later, right? So I already explained what you're gonna need for that ring and right now we just don't have the materials or the ways to get the materials without needlessly grinding our asses off to do that. And there's a much tried and true method of doing it even a better way. So we need not worry about this. So from here, uh, go ahead and head over to the Lunar Gate. Make sure you make a save outside of it. Uh, because we are going to get locked into some crazy sequences uh, here in a little bit. So you want to make sure that you have abilities learned that you want. And have your magic stocked your items bought all that good stuff before you continue on to the next area because the game is about to shift in a completely new direction so we're going to take the party and head over to the lunar gate then i've got a de-junction That's like the first time we've seen Angelo and since the beginning, <laughs> since we met Renoa. Other than him being loaded on a cannon. Trust them. All right, so pretty cool choice here, right? You get to pick one of your members uh, to come with you on this adventure. So I generally, every time I play this game, I kind of switch around who comes with me um, for the space trip. And some of the time I usually go with who my lowest levels are and stuff like that. 
just kind of situational dependent to be honest uh, but it's been years since I selected selfie for this so I'm actually going to take selfie along I think the last few times I actually took Questus and uh, Irvine a lot just so I could have a space cowboy you know So yep, we're going to space. What a turn. Some of the game kind of gets chaotic, to be honest, like, there was really no explanation over this thing. Unless I completely missed the dialogue, but... So yeah, like I said, um, Adia will have her moment to shine here. Um, Quest, this is at a pretty decent level for me to be okay with not leveling her up for a little bit. Honestly, I, don't, I really don't even get into battles anyway, so it's just more of her running along with us. She's going to have like one moment to shine, really, and that's it. Because the, the enemies about where we're about to go into aren't really worth fighting with this party. So we'll go ahead and uh, select Irvine. Then as far as junctioning goes, you do want to give your magics up to each other, just so they're not completely screwed over. Uh, this will be your opportunity to, you know, to play around with the Dia for a little bit, um, kind of give her some combat. Level her up if you want to. Level up your other guys who probably you've been leaving behind in the dust for a little bit. And or just continue on to the city. And begin the next chapter. Okay, so there's a lot of like major story beats here and I kind of want to do another video to go over Lunatic Pandora since there's a lot to explain and this is already at 40 minutes anyway so I think it's a good cutoff point but in the next one we are going to head into Star City and begin the Lunatic Pandora uh, quest here it's confusing if you don't know where you're going and you get lost here you are going to miss out on the opportunity of boarding the lunatic pandora and receiving any of those items that you kind of built yourself up to um, when you were doing the laguna dream sequence number two so important to follow along Hopefully you did everything from my earlier videos 
and you're gonna net yourself some pretty nice rewards once we get in there. Lunatic Pandora does have some interesting enemies to fight. Uh, you know, imps, very deadly, uh, with magic, status ailments, death casting. You can fight a behemoth in there. Uh, very rare though, but those things are, are pretty tough enemies too to deal with, so... Not a good time in Lunatic Pandora if you want to try to avoid encounters, so just have encounter none, or just use the double click option there where it gives you no encounters anyway. And if you want to fight him, go ahead. Hopefully Odin shows up to save your life. And you get as much experience as you want to. Which will might, might probably be good for a party like this who is like severely underleveled from where Squall's at. But like I said, I think 22 or above is pretty decent for everybody. Um, until disc 4 and then that's when we're going to go level crazy. Well, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.